Today we're starting off looking at parabolas here in uh, section one, and we're not looking at them through the perspective of graphing by transformations. We've done that in a previous chapter. Here we're just looking at it through the perspective of a conic section, and so there's a little bit of new vocabulary and a new process to go through as we take a look at them. We have a vertex, you recognize that, so there it is, and we've just placed it at the origin on this graph, just for reference. Um, but we have this thing called the focus. So when we graph by hand, I'll just label that with the letter F for focus. And we also have this directrix. So I'll graph this and label that with a capital D for directrix. This is not a horizontal asymptote. We're still drawing it as a dashed line because it's a reference line. And what we're doing is we are representing the key pieces of our parabola. What we're looking at here is sort of a random point on the parabola. And the definition of a parabola is that every single point, let's use this as an example, every single point on that parabola is going to be the same distance from the focus as it is to that directrix, right? So if you were to measure them, they should be the same. Here's another point, just a random point. If you were to measure the distance to the focus and measure the distance to the directrix, again, they should be congruent as well. So what we're seeing is that the vertex is also equally distant between the focus and the vertex. So this distance here, we're going to label with the value of P. So as part of our equation, we will be using P. This P is this distance right here. Now we'll have two additional points to the right and to the left of the focus. So um, we'll be graphing four points all together the vertex, the focus, and then the two on either side of the focus. And this distance here is double the value of P. So that's a key value that we're using. That's two times P. So on either side of the focus, there it is. So that's our definition of parabola is the set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed line called the directrix and a fixed point called the focus. Now, it's possible that our parabola could open upside down, right? We've seen that before. That would be a reflection. But it's also possible that our parabola could open to the right or to the left. So, again, it looks like a lot of information here all at once. But notice what we're really focusing on is does our parabola open up? If, it's, if, if it does, then that means the focus is above the vertex. Does it open down? Then that means the focus is below. Does it open to the right? That means the focus is to the right of the vertex. Does it open to the left? Well, then the focus is to the left of that vertex, right? And so if we can figure out which way it opens, we know where the focus will be relative to the vertex or the other way around. And we also have this value of P. It'll be negative if we're opening up to the left. The value of P is positive if we're opening up to the right. This value of P is negative if we're opening down, and this value of P is positive if we're opening up. So they're not showing you the signs here. They're not showing you if that's a positive or a negative P. It just happens to be positive or negative, depending on which way it opens. But notice this coefficient in front is not just P, it's four times P. We have an x squared equals 4p times y. So the h and the k are your vertex. So there's the vertex, h and k. If you're opening up to the right and to the left, well, this time it's now y squared equals 4p times x. And again, your vertex is h and k. So the h is not in the front. The h follows the x and the k follows the y. So we have a little memory trick I hope it's a memory trick that helps us remember which way the parabola opens up. And if you think of your basic Cartesian coordinate grid, if you were to plot a point up here, this coordinate point would have a positive y, and down here you would have a coordinate point with a negative y. So if our parabola opens up, we should find a positive y, and if our parabola opens down, we should find a negative y on the equation itself. So take a look at these here. What we're doing is we're focusing on the right-hand side of the equation. We're looking to see if we have a negative or positive value, and we're pairing it up with 
that variable. So this is a negative x. This is a negative y. All right. Where would we find a negative x? Well, the negative x, if we were plotting point, that would be on the left side of the graph. That means it opens to the left. So we know this graph, this parabola opens to the left. All right. So in other words, you would have your vertex, and the focus would be to the left of that, and the parabola wraps around the focus like that. Here, number two, we have a negative y, so that tells us it's going to open down. Right, so in other words, if we know where the vertex is, the focus will be below that, and the parabola wraps around the focus. Here in problem three, we have a positive 20, so that's a positive y, so that means it opens up. And on number four, we have a positive 16x, so that is opening to the right. So those are the basics in terms of how it opens. So in the next few examples, what we're going to do is we're going to be given the equation itself, and then we will have to identify all of these features, the vertex, the focus, even the value of p, so that we can set up those two additional points, and then we're going to sketch the graph as well. All right, so that's what you see here at the top. It says find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, Right, and they're listed here for us as well. Now be careful in the homework because the homework says to find these first three things. It doesn't actually say to find the additional points, but we need those so that we can create the width of the parabola. So don't leave those out on your assignment. Here's problem number four. So this is not the standard form we want. We want the term with the power of two on the left. So let's flip flop this equation around. And furthermore, we want the coefficient on that x squared to be 1. So let's multiply both sides by negative 4. All right, so now we have a positive x squared equals negative 4y. I'm going to expand this a little bit because we want to recognize the h and the k. So right behind the x is the h, but there is no number, so that means h is 0. On the right-hand side, there's your negative 4 and y minus 0. Again, k is 0 in this case. So we know h is 0, k is 0. This, this coefficient of negative 4, that's not the p. That's the 4 times p. So if you set 4p equal to that number, that means p is negative 1. All right, so see that negative sign? We're thinking to ourselves, negative what? Negative y. So I interpret that as meaning it opens down. All right, so the vertex is at 0, 0. Plot the point. It opens down, so we know the parabola will look like this. That means the focus is going to be underneath it. How far below? That distance of p. So one unit down, and there's your focus. So label these with the letters. There's your v and f. The directrix is going to be the same distance of p, but on the other side. So one unit above, and it will go horizontally across, so d for directrix. So the focus is located at 0, comma, negative 1. We want the equation of this horizontal line, so that's y equals 1. And then we need the two additional points. So we take the value of p, which again is 1. We double it, so we want to go two units on either side of the focus. And that will set the width of the parabola like this. And those additional points are negative 2, negative 1, and positive 2, negative 1. So that's the sequence of steps. Get the equation in the standard form, identify the vertex, the h and the k, identify the p, then we start plotting with the vertex, and then using the value of p and the direction that it opens, we can place the other items on there. All right, so what we're doing is we're just looking at different variations on this. And here, number five, again, our equation is not in standard form. We want the term with the power of two on the left, so the x's will stay on the left, but the y with the power of one has to go to the other side. So we have x minus one quantity squared equals positive eight times the y plus 2. Okay, now we're ready. 
So here is the H and here is the K. Again, remember you always switch the signs when you take that information out of the grouping symbol. So H is in fact a positive one and K is a negative two. So we know our vertex already, one comma negative two. Uh, what did I say? Positive one and negative two. Yeah, that's what I said. There's the vertex. And uh, which way does it open? We're looking at a positive Y. So we can see that it opens up. So that means the focus have to, has to be above the vertex. How far above? The value of P. We need that number. So eight is equal to four times P. P is two. All right, two units above that. There's the focus that's located at one comma zero. Let's go two units in on the other side and that will give us the directrix. Horizontal line, that's y equals one, two, three, four, negative four. Then we need those two additional points. So take the value of p, double it. So we wanna go four on either side of the focus. So one, two, three, four to the right, one, two, three, four to the left. And that sets the width. Those additional points are located at negative three comma zero and five comma zero. So there's two examples. We got an opening down, we got an opening up. Let's look at the next one. Here in number six, this is not in the standard form either. We want the y squared on the left. So let's uh, you know flip flop the equation around. Again, we want the coefficient on that y squared to be one, so multiply both sides by four. Now we have to have parentheses on both sides, right? We, we, we need the h and the k to be inside a set of grouping symbols, and we don't have those. That means we need to complete the square. So move the constant term to the other side. So now we have a four x minus five. Then our value of b is negative two, so we wanna take b over two quantity squared. So divide this by two, we get a negative one, square that, we have a positive one. So we're adding positive one to both sides. And then that's a trinomial that we can factor. So y minus one quantity squared equals, combine your constant terms. So notice we do have the k, that's inside the grouping symbols, but we don't have the h because we don't have the grouping symbol. So now we have to divide out that common factor of four. So one more line here, we'll just fit it in. Y minus one, quantity squared equals, there's your four in front with the X minus one in parentheses. So now that's your H and K. So this is your H right behind the X and this is your K. Change the signs and that means we end up with positive one and positive one. So the vertex is at one comma one. All right, which way does it open? We're looking at the positive four paired up with the x. A positive x is plotted on the right-hand side of the graph. So that means it's going to open to the right. And that means the focus will be to the right of the vertex. How far? We need that, that value of p. So four is what the four p equals, so p is one. All right, so one unit to the right, there's your focus. One unit to the left, there's the directrix. It's vertical this time because the parabola has to open away from that directrix. Take that value of P and double it and two units above the focus, two units below the focus, create those two additional points. There it is. So the focus is located at two comma one. The equation of a vertical line is X equals, it crosses the X axis at zero and those two additional points all set. So we had to complete the square on this one and we'll be doing the same on the next as well. Here's the last in this series. Again find your term with the power of 2. We want that on the left side. That means we want all the y's on the left side. So we have y squared plus 6y. Move everything else to the right. So now you have a negative 8x and a negative 25 on the right. So let's see, that's the value of b, which is a six. Divide that by two, we get three. Square the three, and we have nine. So to complete the square, we're adding nine to both sides. 
and factor the left hand side y plus 3 quantity squared on the right hand side combine those constant terms we get a negative 16 so again we have to have parentheses on both sides and because we don't on the right we need to remove a common factor of negative 8. So now we have a positive x and a positive 2 in the grouping symbols. So here's my h, here's my k. h is negative 2, k is negative 3, and there's the vertex. We can see that the negative 8 is paired up with the x. Where would we find negative x coordinates plotted? That would be on the left hand side. So this opens left. Take that coefficient of negative 8, set that equal to 4p. That means our p is negative 2. All right. So because this parabola opens to the left, that means we need to focus to the left of that vertex. So two units to the left. Is your focus. Two units to the right is your directrix. Again, it's on the y-axis. And then those two additional points, double the value p, which is four, and count one, two, three, four units above and below the focus. So we're just off of the grid line, but that's fine. We can make that work. There it is. So all of the extra information, the focus is at negative four, negative three. Directrix again is x equals 0, and those additional points.